If you want to learn more about Dragon Ball video games, check out my book, Play the Dragon, the History of Dragon Ball Video Games, which covers everything from the Famicom all the way to the PlayStation era. And it includes reviews, retrospectives, and detailed information about all these games. And as an added bonus, if you purchase the physical copy from Amazon, you get the Kindle version for your phone or your tablet directly for free. So buy it today. Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video games. I'm Ryan and... Wait a minute. There's somebody knocking at my door. I wonder who it is. Ryan! Bro! How are you? Yes, pleased to make your acquaintance. I am the slime serving the king. Oh my god, King Slime! What brings your noble presence to my humble abode, and what do I owe the honor, sir? Bro, I was just in the neighborhood looking for you. Can we come inside? Absolutely. Come on this way, sir. I hope my seats are comfortable, your highness. Oh yeah, bro. Sitting on these chairs is comforting for my slimy ass. What do you think, servant? These chairs are quite the comfortable arrangement indeed. Thank you, Ryan. Ooh, that's good to hear. Okay, dog, down to business. Ryan, I want you to give me the best review of Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of an Elusive Age. Yes, His Majesty has chosen you to deliver the utmost detailed review of the game out of all the reviewers out there. Bro, aside from Geekdom 101 and Sack Chief, there is no bigger Dragon Quest fan than you who can deliver us the review we need. What? You want me? Out of every single reviewer in the reviewerverse, you want me to review Dragon Quest XI? Me! The Slime King is picking me! But first, bring me and my servant your finest food to eat as we are hungry from this long trip, bro. Yes, your finest edible arrangements will do to fill our parched and famished stomachs. Right away, sir. I will find you the finest delicacies that Earth can provide. I'm gonna grab my jacket and I'm gonna go.
So how's the food, your highness? Bro, this is good shit. You gotta take me to meet this burger king. Yes, these things called french fries are quite the delicious offering. I can see why you humans are so strong and healthy. Yes! A meal fit for a king! Mr. Ryan, you have truly been accommodating to both me and my king. I wish more humans were as hospitable as you. Ah, thank you, Servant Slime. Ryan, bro, are you truly ready to give us this Dragon Quest XI review? Alright, your highness. I shall deliver a Dragon Quest XI review like no other! Good! Now I will transport you to the land of Erdria. Good luck, Mr. Ryan. Whoa! Huh. Whoa. Where am I? It looks like I'm in the land of Erdria! Well, guys, this time's for real. Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video games. I'm Ryan, and this duty given to me by the King of Slimes, I am reviewing Dragon Quest XI. So, I have been a huge fan of the Dragon Quest series back when it was Dragon Warrior on the NES. And I've played and finished every single main entry in the Dragon Quest franchise, except Dragon Quest X since that's kind of the MMORPG. So when I heard that Dragon Quest XI was coming out for all the next-gen systems, I was like, Oh my god, more Dragon Quest! I mean, we haven't gotten a main Dragon Quest entry since, you know, Dragon Quest IX on the, uh, DS! Yes, the DS! Sorry, the, uh, Wii and Wii U versions of Dragon Quest X don't count for us until they come out with an online-less version, or offline version, of Dragon Quest X in the future. So I first got to play Dragon Quest XI at E3 2018, where you got to choose between two scenarios. You can play kind of the beginning of the game, or you can do one of the horse races. And I chose the beginning of the game just to get the feel of it, and I was like, wow, look at these graphics. The graphics in this game are gorgeous, and a lot of great games came out in 2018 with great graphics like Spider-Man, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Red Dead Redemption 2, but in my opinion, I don't think anything beats Dragon Quest XI in 2018. I mean, Red Dead Redemption 2 kinda comes close, but I have to give it to Dragon Quest XI, because man, look at all of the locations. It's like you can go on vacation in this game. Seriously, like when you visit the locations in this game, you feel like you want to go to them in real life. So when Dragon Quest XI finally came out for the PS4 and the PC, I bought it on the PS4, and then the rest is history. So Dragon Quest XI begins with the Council of Kingdoms having some kind of meeting, but what is it about? What are they having in store for you? Well, I'll talk about that later. But then, the kingdom is under attack! Oh no! Monsters everywhere! You know, this kind of reminds me of the beginning of Dragon Quest II. And then a young girl and a young mother are running with a small child, and then the young girl puts the child in the river. No! But then the child is picked up by this old man, and then many years later, our story truly begins. So now, our hero, all grown up, in the village of Cobblestone. Man, this place looks really nice. You know, I can just totally settle down here. Our hero has now become an adult. Oh great, now I think he has to worry about auto insurance, getting a job. You know, he's got to provide for his, you know, future family, you know? And our hero is known as the Luminary. One of the legendary heroes from long ago. Just like every Dragon Quest game has some kind of legendary hero, right? But the hero and his childhood friend Gemma had to engage in a rite of passage in order to become adults in the eyes of the adults of Cobblestone. So let me guess, Gemma's gonna be the hero's love interest? Well, kind of, sort of. So once our hero and Gemma reach the summit of Cobblestone Tor, it's Dragon Quest XI, Breath of the Wild. But then our hero and Gemma are attacked. But then, the luminary, our hero, displays his valiant display of courage, because I say display a lot, and proves that now he is a man. So now that the hero has proven his worth as an adult, he is to see the King of Heliodor, because he is the legendary luminary. And thus begins our quest in the world of Erdria. 
So unlike the previous Dragon Quest games, the world of Urgia, yes, is huge, but it's more split into separate sections rather than one gigantic world map like in the previous Dragon Quest games, cause looking at the scope of the graphics in this game and how huge a lot of these areas are, I can kind of understand they have to go the Final Fantasy X route for this. But man, the world of Urgia is Beautiful! And ever since Dragon Quest IX, the enemies have appeared on the world map, so you do have the choice to fight them or not. And I know a lot of people are kind of like, uh, iffy on this, and they kind of prefer the random battles, but I do kind of prefer seeing the enemies, and if I want to fight them, I'll fight them, but I'll run if I need to run. And also, you do get a horse, so you can actually bump enemies off the map and don't even have to fight them. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Uh, the horse. The lazy man's way of not grinding. So now let us begin with a lot of the new mechanics introduced in Dragon Quest XI. Now you do have your normal battles with the enemies, but this time you actually get to move your character around, you get to change the camera, so you have a little bit more of interaction, a little bit like Lightning Returns, but not really. But this is more of a cosmetic thing, because it doesn't matter where you are, like, if you're far away from your enemies, you'll still attack them, and even if you're far away from the enemies, they'll still attack you, so don't expect to run all the way to the edge of the screen and try to avoid enemy attacks. It's not gonna work. And not only do you gain experience from battles, you get skill points which you can use in the Character Builder. Now the Character Builder is kind of like the license grid in Final Fantasy XII. Like if you have a certain amount of skill points, you can unlock a lot of powerful abilities. And some characters actually have different types of abilities, like you can actually you know, learn boomerangs, you can learn axes, you can learn swords, you can learn more offensive magic or more defensive magic. And I do recommend not really running from all your battles, but try to grind as much as you can so you can get all those skill points for the character builder. And also one of the newer features in this game is the fun-sized forge, where you get to forge all your awesome weapons, kind of like the alchemy pot in Dragon Quest VIII. Now the fun-sized forge does take a little while to get used to. You kind of have to like, you know, you have to have it at a certain temperature, and then after that you have to, you know, pound it at just the right strength, and then it does take away some points. And if you don't forge everything just right, you still may be able to make the weapon, but it won't have any of the power-ups. And also in Dragon Quest XI, you can go on quests, where you kind of do a task for somebody else and get rewards. And these are scattered all over the world, and if you complete a lot of quests, you can get some of the best items in the game. So, our hero makes it to the beautiful kingdom of Heliodor. I mean, holy crap, this place is huge and gorgeous, man. You know, I can just like chill here all day, hang out. Yeah, how's it going, everybody? This Heliodor is the kingdom to be. So our hero makes an audience with the king, King Carnelian. And just as we think King Carnelian's going to hail a welcoming party for our hero, Throw this car in the dungeon! He is the dark spawn! He them! He them! So you go from the legendary luminary, the hero of the story, to Jailbird. Wow, that's kind of a crappy way to start this story. And you're thrown in prison by the two generals, Jasper and Hendrik, who you encounter quite a bit throughout this game. So in prison, you meet the thief Eric. Yeah, so being a Dragon Ball fan, the first thing I said when I saw Eric was, Hey, Eric is Super Saiyan Blue! He's a Super Saiyan God with the power of a Super Saiyan. Not really, but late game he is! When you power him up, man, Eric's a fucking beast! Yeah, so Eric is the thief of the party. He has boomerangs, he has knives, he can steal items. And also one of the new mechanics in this game is the pep system. Like when you go pep, you have this blue R like Fah! And not only does it make you more powerful, you can unleash team attacks. You can unleash super duper awesome attacks. I mean, just look at all this pep stuff, man. So the hero and his new buddy Eric escape through the Heliodorian prisons underground, away from the guards. And then Eric's like, hmm, I have to get my red orb. And you know what? My good old buddy Dirk back in Heliodor probably has it. Okay, Eric, we're not gonna go back to Heliodor where we just escaped. Well, I guess we can go down to the slums of Heliodor, right? So after making their way through the Heliodor slums by scaring a guard who's actually afraid of dogs. Aw, oh, but the dogs are so friendly in this game. We sneak back into Heliodor at night and then we encounter Eric's friend Dirk. Yeah, look at you, Dirk, living the honest straight life. I mean, dude, what, what happened to the thug life, man? What happened to the thug life you had with Eric, man? You thugs be bros, yo! But Dirk says, well, I don't have the red orb anymore. I sold it! You mother! 
Well, Derek, you have a really nice house. I'll give you that. But you saw the arm to buy this blood! So our hero and Eric have to go down to the King's Bear to get back the red orb. Now Dragon Quest dungeons can get a bit confusing, especially some of the first couple of games like Dragon Quest 1 through 4. But in recent years, Dragon Quest dungeons have been a lot easier and thankfully the majority of the dungeons in this game aren't too complicated. Even the final one's not that complicated. But there is one that I will talk about later. So once our hero and Eric grab the orb from the King's Barrow after defeating a whole bunch of monsters, they're pursued by the Helidorian army again, but this time led by Hendrik. And then, okay, holy crap, so either we confront Hendrik and his soldiers, or we just go into some portal where we have no idea where the fuck it's gonna lead us. You know what? Let's go with the portal! And so our heroes get transported all the way to the other side of the world, to the town of Hoto. So once you arrive at the hot springs town of Hoto, yeah, this place looks pretty nice to hang out in, you know, take a bath or just hang out by the pool. I didn't choose the thug life, the thug life chose me. So we see a little girl trying to find her father Noah, but then we find another little girl who's trying to find her sister, and she actually claims she's trying to find her little sister. Whoa, hey kids. Yeah, kids aren't allowed in the bars. You have to be like 21 or something. Wait, you are 21? What kind of growth stunt happened to you, kid? Well, I guess we're gonna help find your sister and your father. Let's go. So this little pile of spunk is named Veronica, one of the wizards from the Arborean Highlands looking for her sister Serena, who got kidnapped and was taken to the Cryptic Crypt. Sounds kind of cryptic. So once we go into the Cryptic Crypt, there are these branches that the hero can touch since he is the Luminary, and he can see into the past. And so he kind of sees what happened to Veronica and Serena. Serena got kidnapped, then the monster's magic turned Veronica into a little girl, but although she's still an adult. So once you defeat the monsters down to the Cryptic Crypt, because, you know, that was very cryptic, by the way, Veronica and Serena are united, and Veronica is the offensive magic caster, so she gets all the killer fireball spells, and then you have Serena as a defensive magician, where she heals the party and has her own harp to help you out. And I've heard a lot of fans don't really like Veronica, but I think Veronica is one of the best parts of the game. Like, she's so spunky, she's so hilarious. I love the dynamic between both Serena and Veronica. You know, they're just sisters. You know, sisters being sisters, and they're both magic wielders here to protect the luminary. So our party decides, you know, we need to find a special branch that's going to help us find all the orbs, so let us go to the Kingdom of Galopolis. So after Veronica and Serena join the party with the hero and Eric, we go to the Kingdom of Galopolis, where if we help Prince Ferris impress his father to show that he's a man, that he'll help us find the branch to help us find the orbs. And Prince Ferris kind of wants you to do everything in his place. Oh gee, I wonder how this is gonna go. Okay, let me guess. I mean, this is totally original, guys. He's gonna make us do the work, but then he'll be revealed for the fraud that he is, and we'll get all the credit. I know where this is going, I know. So we check out the circus show, and we see the circus jester, Silvando. And I love Silvando, he is a he with the ladies, darlings, how are you doing? Ooh, Prince Ferris, I think you're gonna make them do all your dirty work. I mean, Silvando is the type of guy that you want to hang out and have a drink with because he's just like a pile of positive energy and he makes you want to be a better person. So in order to impress the Sultan of Galopolis, we engage in a horse race as Prince Ferris, but it's really us. Yep, totally us. But then after that, Prince Ferris has to defeat the monster in the sands. And holy shit, once you see this monster, I don't really blame him for not wanting to kill this thing because fuck, this thing looks hard. And it's kind of a hard boss battle too, but not that hard. So once you capture the monster in all of your glory, or all of Prince Ferris's glory, because remember, he's getting all the credit so we can kind of get our little item to help us find the orbs. Oh yeah. And if you're wondering, this is exactly the part where everything goes wrong, right? Right? So Prince Ferris is like, I killed the monster. I am the awesome Prince of Galapagos. So you're gonna call me the king, right? Right? Oh shit! The monster comes back! And holy shit. Well, Prince Ferris, prove yourself! So after another battle with the monster, Prince Ferris actually does prove himself! 
Holy shit, I didn't see that coming, not even from 100 miles away. And then Prince Ferris spills the beans and says, yeah, I'm sorry, I made these guys do my work, but his father is impressed anyways, but Prince, you still proven yourself, so you're a man now. Yes. Yeah, but you know, we still did all the work, so where the fuck's our item, dude? Oh, great, we gotta go to Gondolia. This is a wild goose chase, isn't it? Just like every Dragon Quest game. That's a good thing. So we go to the beautiful port city of Gondolia where our buddy Silvando has a ship. Oh, you got a circus career, you got a ship. What else are you not, Silvando? Oh, we're gonna find out pretty soon in the future. So after evading the Heliodorian forces again, led by the evil Jasper, well now, I'm gonna seize your ship and do a lot of bad things to it. So once we get the ship, our travels bring us to the Zwar Dust region. Oh, this is a very, very nice patch of grass. I gotta say that. Near the Kingdom of Dundrasil. Hmm. The Kingdom of Dundrasil. That sounds so familiar. But first, we must go to the town of Octagonia. I think MMA fans are gonna get a big kick out of this. So the town of Octagonia is a big ass fight club, UFC and all that stuff. And the big champ is our champion Vince. You know, Vince, man, he'd be like punching people for money because you know, he's got to help the orphanage, man. He's got a hot of gold, son. So Vince convinces the party to join the martial arts tournament and holy shit, it's the Dragon Quest IV music. Oh my God, fan board is home. And we do have two mysterious fighters, a lovely lady and an old man. Gotta be Master Roshi from Dragon Ball, right? Hey everybody, Ryan here, and thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, especially subscribe, and make sure to click on that notification bell so you know when we release new videos because YouTube probably won't tell you. And if you want to watch me play games live, you can watch me on twitch.tv slash battlegeekplus. And if you have a Twitch Prime account, you can subscribe for emotes and a lot more awesome perks to support the show. And if you want to support the show, you can donate at patreon.com slash ryanmolina because every dollar helps me bring you a better show. And make sure to follow me on Twitter at ThatRyanMolina and at BattleGeekPlus. And also make sure to check out the official BattleGeekPlus website at BattleGeekPlus.com. We got books, we got t-shirts, make sure to check out our awesome popcorn related t-shirts, our BattleGeekPlus t-shirts, and a lot more. And last but not least, make sure to check out these other videos while you're here. Thank you very much and see you later.